Hello and welcome. We are going to look at question 7 of UCE 2020. Continuation of some of the previous videos we have been having. So figure 2 shows an electrochemical cell. This is the figure. And they want us to state what is observed at the copper foil. Now this, the cell we have is quite challenging because it does not have an external source of, of electricity and in this case with this kind of cells what normally happens is that we use the given electrodes together with the electrolyte to produce electricity so before we try to attempt answering this question we are going to first have some brief summary of what we expect whenever we have a given electrochemical cell whose electrodes are unknown although they may be known in terms of their electronegativity or reactivity so this is a general outlook of a simple electro electric cell whereby we shall have our electrodes and then we have our electrolyte in our case we shall use sulfuric acid to explain this but whenever you dip two electrodes in a given electrolyte as long as these electrodes, let us say electrode A and B, have different electronegativities, that means one will be more reactive than the other. So let us assume electron, electrode B is more reactive than electrode A. So obviously this will be metallic electrodes, at least let us rule out graphite. In this case we want to use metals. So if our metal B is more reactive than metal A, that means if at all we are to see our bulb glowing or lighting, it's only possible if this metal, which is more reactive than A, decides to give out its electrons. Remember metals are ionized by a loss of electrons. So our metal B must lose electrons so as to become an ion. So you'll find that if this metal B loses its electron, this electron will now travel through this wire to this other side. So we shall see the electron moving in this direction. So that means our current is in the opposite direction from this side to the right hand side. But electrons will flow from the metal that is more reactive to the metal A which is less reactive. Now in this case of ours, we have zinc. Let us go back to our zinc. So we have our zinc electrode. And this side we have our copper electrode. And we know zinc is more reactive than copper. That means in this case our zinc will lose the electrons so as to form a zinc ion. So zinc will lose two electrons to form our zinc ion. And in this case the zinc ion will go into our solution here. Remember in our solution we have our sulfuric acid. In ionic form we shall have the hydrogen ions and the sulfate ions. So these electrons will move towards the copper electrode. Now we know copper is a metal and metals are not good at taking up electrons. They also want to lose. So we shall not expect our copper to pick up two electrons to form a negatively charged ion. This is ruled out. So what exactly happens? Once these electrons reach our copper electrode, they will be picked up by hydrogen ions from this solution. So hydrogen ions will move towards this electrode which will somehow be electron rich. So the hydrogen ions will come and pick up the electrons such that we get something like this. We shall get the hydrogen ions picking up an electron to form a hydrogen atom. However, because hydrogen is diatomic, two electrons will be picked up by two hydrogen ions to form hydrogen gas. So at this point, we shall see bubbles of a colorless gas, which is obviously hydrogen. So the sulfate ions will then now move towards our zinc electrode where it will meet the zinc 2 plus ions which will have been formed and they will have dissolved into our solution. So the cycle will continue. In our solution, the sulfate ions will move towards our zinc electrode as the hydrogen ions will also be repelled by the zinc ions towards our copper electrode. 
So the first question is what is observed at the copper foil? Actually, it will be this hydrogen gas that will be observed. So because usually gases in solutions will be seen as bubbles of that given gas and hydrogen is colorless, so the observation will be bubbles of a colorless gas. You can also say effervescence will also be seen, but at least when you say bubbles of a colorless gas, we are specific, the gas is colorless. Some people will hear hissing sound and so on, but this option could be the best. Bubbles of a colorless gas. Write the equation or equations for the reaction at the cathode. Now, the question is, which of these two is the cathode? One thing to tell is that we need to first identify where does oxidation occur and where does reduction take place. We know that electrons are moving from the zinc electrode to our copper electrode. So you'll find that actually our copper electrode has to be positively charged such that our electrons are moving towards the positive electrode while our zinc electrode will be negatively charged. But we can't base on this to determine what the cathode is and what the anode is. One thing to know is that the anode is where oxidation takes place. And then the cathode is where reduction takes place. Some people abbreviate this as anox, at least if you know that anmol, and then our red cut. So you can tell that at the anode oxidation takes place and at the cathode reduction takes place. So from my equation, this equation here, our zinc is losing electrons. And another abbreviation we can bring in is known as oil rig. Oil rig, whereby we say oxidation is loss while reduction is gain. Reduction is gain of electrons. So here we're dealing with electrons. So oxidation is loss of electrons. Our zinc is losing electrons to become a zinc ion. So actually this is where we have oxidation and that means this is where we shall have our anode because oxidation occurs at the anode. So this may be quite challenging because usually the anode in our normal cells where we are using an external source of electricity, the anode is usually considered to be positive but in this case our anode is negative. So as you can see our anode it's where we have our zinc. So we shall have our zinc at the anode. So our anode is here. So here we are going to have our our zinc. Let us remove that. We shall have our zinc here at the anode. So at the cathode we shall have this other reaction whereby we are producing hydrogen gas. So equation at the at the cathode will be the hydrogen ions will pick two electrons to form hydrogen gas which will be seen as bubbles of a colorless gas. Then at our anode we shall have zinc losing two electrons to produce zinc ions. Just that we prefer adding electrons but this is also acceptable just that we usually we don't like subtracting electrons that's why we bring the two electrons to the right hand side part c write the overall cell reaction equation now for the overall all we need to do is to add equation in roman 1 plus equation in roman 2 if you can do the math you will see that we shall have hydrogen ions plus the two electrons plus zinc will give us the hydrogen gas plus the zinc ions plus the two electrons. But because the two electrons are on the opposite side of the arrow, these ones can be somehow cancelled out. So we shall have the following equation. We shall basically have the zinc reacting with the hydrogen ions to form hydrogen gas and the zinc ions. So this will be the overall equation. Simply add the single equation at the anode and the single equation at the cath cathode. Part D state one application of an electrochemical cell. Obviously these are quite many but they are a bit related. 
we can use it to manufacture dry cells we can use it to manufacture wet cells we can use it to make batteries at least you can also read about other uses of electrochemical cells so this is basically all about question 7 of UCE 2020 if you have any question let me know in the comment section below I'll try to reply as soon as possible you can also read about the lead acid accumulators at least it can also be applied here so that's all I had for you today stay safe